put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Year three or fifth three -er, I guess, game review. It's been nine months since the ending of the second one, at least according to the online manual, which makes it really strange that Jin has survived for all that long and makes me wonder if Point Man has been interrogated for all that time, but whatever. Fettle is back. Again. No, wait, we're ignoring the expansion packs, so Fettle is just back. And he comes and frees the point man from, yes, the interrogation being beaten by some Armacam troops. It's a, it's one of the game's few clever moments in a cutscene where the powers of both brothers is established and it ends with this sort of thing, I'm not going to give it away, but it does leave you wondering if the last thing Point Man does right before it ends was trying to kill one of the people interrogating him or if he was trying to kill or at least showing aggression towards Fettel. Right after this he picks up one of those very handy dandy earpieces which somehow yet again allow him to hear all the radio chatter from the ATC. I swear these guys will never change their frequency no matter how often they note that this guy knows everything they're doing. Anyway, he hears the cries for help of Jin now reduced to a damsel in distress. Well, not entirely, but yeah. And you are out to save her because well, this game needs some kind of direction. Yeah. Alma is about to give birth, and you have to get to her before that happens. This game, I gotta say, first of all, is really boring. It's not even a long game, which is another of the negatives. It's actually shorter than the second one. The second one took me maybe a day to complete. This one, I could do it in maybe four hours, roughly. You know, let's say five just to be on the safe side. That's like Hitman Codename 47 once you already know everything to do short. You know, what games are that short today? If, yeah, there are eight levels. They take, you know, roughly 30 minutes to complete each. <sighs> yeah, more on that a little later. But it just does not draw you in. You know, it's, it's in stark contrast to the second game, which really had me for every second of it, you know. And yeah, f it's basically what you expect from the fear series. You know, you have these shootouts. On the plus side, that does remain quite tactical and you literally can move around and, you know, sort of affect the direction of the, you know, shootout. You know, you can stay in cover or you can move from one cover to another. You can, you can flank your enemies and they will try to flank you as well. The guns are cool enough, you know, kind of just big, dumb, and loud. You know, nothing, nothing terribly memorable there. The entire game, actually, the, the action tends to be kind of big, dumb, and loud. And yeah, you still have the, you know, the slow-mo ability. The... So, yes, Point Man finally gets a face. 
third game and he finally gets a face. I guess by the ninth game he'll have a wo voice and a name as well. And this one, you know, with bringing back Fettel, also allows you to play as him once you've completed the level already as Point Man. Yeah. As Fettel, you can do this stun attack, which is ranged. You can suspend enemies or items in the air, and from there you're supposed to be able to throw. The manual says that you can do this with enemies, but I've... I don't know. What I read elsewhere was that you can also throw explosive objects. You know, the explosive objects that they leave around, even their bases and such just so you can shoot them and cause explosions and thus take out several army camp troops at once. You know, yeah, those. I would try it, but again, boring. So yeah, if you do suspend, and, and this will literally, you know, raise in the air, an enemy, you can also possess him. And at that point, the game is essentially the exact same as when you're playing as Point Man. The only difference is, you only have a limited amount of time to play as that, un unless you kill enemies and collect their essences, their souls, and, you know, if you, if you get killed in that form, you won't actually die, you'll just be tossed out, but if you're killed in that form, and then, you know, behind enemy lines with a lot of people shooting at you, you're essentially dead, so it's not that huge of a difference. And you can choose to dispossess him at any point. So yeah, you know, you, you add another character and yeah, essentially it boils down to the same thing. I don't know what that shows more, how, you know, un... Yeah, what what a boring idea it is to even bring Fettel in, or how poor the execution is. So yeah, the you know that that does, I guess, lengthen the single player portion of the game. That you can you know play the entire thing through as Fettel as well, and you know as the game promises, there is indeed at the end a choice. You know if which, you know which is almost favorite son based on which one you got more bonuses as. So you know, yeah, the the game is very insecure very much wants you to continue playing. I don't know if they just realized how bad it was or they're just very very insecure people the developers but this is all about the participation trophies. It hands those out by the boatload. Literally sometimes every couple of seconds you're playing you'll be told oh you got this much progress on this or that you know, challenge, which gives you some XP, which levels you up, which gets you more of the slow-mo bar, or more health, you know. And that was actually, you know, the other games, I think, had similar stuff where you could actually, you know, you could at least lengthen the slow-mo bar in certain ways. This one, you know, I'm sorry, but being told that you're earning XP and, you know, constantly being reminded this is a video game and, you know, we're rewarding you, that really takes the terror away. So, you know, this... <laughs> it was always an odd couple, you know, John Woo and The Ring. But in this one, they really... They mess it up in a way I didn't realize possible, you know. It's not... the, the others were awkward as well, but in this one, it's just the elephant in the room. Now, I have a riddle for you. What is the best way to take away all the potential horror of discovering dead body after dead body? I don't expect you to know the answer, but fortunately, the people behind this game 
did manage to determine it by giving you points for finding some of the bodies and doing a psychic link with them, whatever the crap that even means. Yeah, you you it's it's a good thing to find bodies in this game because it might mean that you get more slow mo or something. You know, again, yeah, this sort of thing just doesn't work for this kind of game, you know. And yes, it keeps going back and forth between, you know, because you literally, you cannot have both slow motion driven first person shooter action and atmospheric gradually building up horror, you know. Some of the tension is there in both, you know, segments. Actually, in this game, you know, the others actually did manage to be scary. This one, I don't know if it's partially how dull it is and how unengaging the story is. By the by, there is nothing anywhere near as creepy or insidious in this as in the first two. I don't have to tell you the kind of stuff you learnt in the first two games, partially also because I'm avoiding spoilers here. In this one, there's nothing like that. There is nothing terribly creepy. Sure, you learn about how, you know, oh, both Point Man and Fettel were you know, kept in this one room and they were like tested on as children. That's it, you know. I I'm sorry, but that's not that interesting. And this whole, you know, sibling rivalry kind of conflict, it's not that interesting. And it's just kind of, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, it didn't, it didn't do anything for me at least that you now have these two characters, partially because one of them's just so very uninteresting, you know, I don't think it was a good idea to bring in a second character at all. If you're, you know, as this kind of, you know, the game was fine as it was, you know, the first two games are fine as they are, essentially, if that's how you're gonna do it. If you're gonna do the John Woo and the Ring thing, then just leave it as that. But bringing in this, you know, and then add to, I'm sorry, everything gets less scary when you have supernatural powers. You know, seeing two supernatural beings fighting each other, or most of this game really, a supernatural being fighting off regular soldiers is no longer scary. You know, it's I get, you know, cool, sure, potentially, but it's not scary. The moment that someone under your you know, the moment that you yourself has supernatural powers and using them like that, you know, also because it seems kind of limitless, you know, he can just go on possessing, so, yeah. There is some streamlining applied, only checkpoint saving, there are no health pickups and such, you know, it's, it's that thing of recent games like this where you know, you get shot and then you have to heal and, excuse me, and it goes pretty quickly as long as you're not getting shot at. Excuse me. Now, there are some quite atmospheric moments, you know, there are some very borderline chilling, at least. You know, with this one having Alma as soon to be a mother <laughs> third time, it does have this sort of, you know, impending childbirth theme with lullabies and, you know, a crib, stuff like that, you know. Level design is pretty on the nose. It's, you know, it's very constructed. It doesn't feel natural, organic. In, in the least. It's just these, you know, you, you have stuff that's arranged so that you have to move around, or stuff that's arranged so you can go up something, or, you know, stuff like that, and it's just, who made these things be this way? You know, there's no kind of, yeah, it's it's just very, and, and every level is just grimy, and dark, and gritty, and it just sucks 
all the fun out. You know, remember the second game where you had these very sort of natural locations where it was this, you know, you actually had these locations that looked like somewhere you might almost go, and it was to some somewhere towards Silent Hill, kind of, with these very everyday sort of locations sometimes, and just made creepy. So, you know, you have this sort of thing, you know, like the school, for example, the, the grade school, or whatever those are called, primary school, whatever. You know, with this just just exactly made creepy, you know. And this one also has less, you know, in the second one you had a bunch of these sort of supernatural... I don't know, this one has, like, the... turned crazy... I, th I think at some point they're referred to as cultists? I don't see that at all. But anyway, they're rage zombies, and they are the primary... the, the former residents of Fairport. And they have messed up faces, white skin, and they run at you and, like, claw at you. And yeah, you can, you know, possess them as well, but they just have the one claw attack, so it's not like there's something interesting there. But yeah, they come running at you until, you know, the developer's tired of that two minutes later, two minutes after introducing them, and then had them be suicide bombers. And then they tired of that, and then they had some standing far from you and chucking, I don't know, pebbles at you or something. Why even make a melee enemy that is fast if you're then gonna have them suspended up above and using a ranged attack? That's just pointless. And you're, you know, hunted, hounded by this, you know, creature that must be a dentist dream patient, because it has, you know, this mouth that is, just opens up. And when I say hounded and, you know, hunted, I really mean that it just shows up every now and then, and it's an apparition. I don't, it, it's not terribly interesting again. It's, it's a nice enough design, sure. There are a few levels of the game that genuinely do interest you. And yeah, you do get to use the mech again. It's nowhere near as cool as it was in the second one, though. But yeah, there are a couple of levels where they sort of, you know, where they, for example, decide, for example, decide, decide, this is going to be a eerie level. And that kind of works, you know, when they just go for that. And there are a couple of action sequences, you know, where you're trapped in this one area and you have to fight off a couple of waves, that's kind of cool. But it's also a remarkably repetitive game for being so short. There are these phase commanders. These They, they look like men made of electricity and they're like taller than you are. And you fight them like a dozen times throughout this game. You know, I... Yeah, I don't know if they should have thought of more creatures for you to fight, or they should have just dialed down the fighting. I'm not sure which should have really been the decision, but either, at least, th this is just really bad, you know. But yes, there is a hefty amount of fighting in this game, so, you know, if you are just here for the action, there's a pretty good amount of that. The graphics have gotten a boost, of course, it's, you know, and there's plenty of gore and brutality in the game. I think that pretty well covers single player, so multiplayer. It sounds like it might be fun if the server did not kick you after minutes of play if there were maybe some dedicated servers. If anyone was playing it, I seriously, I've tried a bunch of times, five people, and not at the same time, is what I've found playing this game in multiplayer. There are four different modes and only three levels per, so, you know, 
12 levels at the most, and if you don't like all the modes, there's even less than 12 levels to play. You have this... There, there's one mode called Contractions, I think, which has wave after wave of enemies attacking, and in between the waves, you and your team can collect you know, ammo and guns, which, you know, there are these cra it's, yeah, it's in these crates, and you have to bring them back to your, you know, not fort, but, you know, your, your building, your, you know, rampaged building, which you have to, um, yeah, that's where you pick up the ammo, and that's where you can sort of regroup, you know, and you can only get weapons and ammo out of it once you bring the box back to the building. And you can repair these barricades, which the enemies will try to tear down when, yeah. Then there is, there, there are two modes focused on Fettel. One is called Soul King, where, as far as I can understand, every player is a Fettel, and they have to possess and kill as many enemies as possible. So it's basically, you know, you don't fight each other, I think, but you, you know, you're just going for the highest score of it. Then there is the, the, the other mode, Soul Survivor. The, the former one's called Soul King. Soul Survivor has you, and yeah, Soul, S-O-U-L, so mm, clever. Where Basically, again, as far as I can tell, I've never been able to play this, like I said. Basically, there are a team of fettles and a team of, you know, regular soldiers. Or maybe every player is just a regular soldier and some of what you're fighting are fettles. You know, I've tried all of these in solo play, but they appear to not be the exact same because there, were, there are no fettles in the solo play of it that you're fighting. So anyway, the final mode is called Effing Run, because, you know, you gotta have swearing everywhere in this game. I'm not a prude, but, you know, if you want proof of that, watch my Terminator review series. But, it's just excessive in these games, you know, it's just constantly swearing. It is the, the words lose their meaning and all impact after a while, you know. Anyway, that one does also seem quite interesting. Basically, you have this level to run through with this wall of death approaching from behind, and every player has to escape from the wall of death. Touching the wall of death means death. One player, you know, dying from the wall of death, or maybe just in general dying in that level, means that the entire team loses. And throughout the level, there are, of course, soldiers trying to you know, shoot you, so everyone has to, you know, and if someone gets shot, you know, there's this revive feature that is actually in all of the, I think, all of the, you know, four, well, possibly not Soul King, but anyway, the other three modes where usually you can also revive yourself by shooting an enemy, but otherwise another player has to go over there and, you know, press the use key, hold it for three seconds maybe, and then you revive. And obviously the player reviving you isn't, you know, gonna be just a bullseye for the enemy, so the player that is being revived will have to try to cover him somehow with, you know, because you can't shoot from, you know, lying on the ground there. Though I think you can only use the pistol. Anyway, yeah, so, you know, you have to actually keep track of where each other are and be a good squad, you know, or you won't get any presents, because you have to actually defeat all these soldiers, you know, and you have to, you know, it's a good mix of you have to run for the exit because there's something chasing you from behind, and you can't just rush into every situation because you might get shot by the others, you know, and maybe the other players will need your assistance in that fight, so, you know. Again, potentially interesting, wish it worked. I think that pretty well covers it as far as I can go without spoilers. Well, the locations, you know, you start out in an Armacamp base, I think. 
And yeah, I guess Fettel made his way to Point Man there in the in those nine months, or maybe they drug him back to, you know, the base where Fettel was shot. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, and Point Man, by the way, you know, yet again shows what a moron he is. Like, in the first game, he gets knocked his ass out. Right at the very beginning, you know, this is not a spoiler, it happens like the second level or something. Yeah, right away he gets knocked out, so, yeah. But yeah, you start in the, the base, you go through the, the slums of Fairport, I guess, you know, because we certainly didn't see enough of those, excuse me, in the other games. But yeah, still, Fairport. There's this bridge, which is actually a really cool level, because basically the bridge is collapsing. And there are all these obstacles on the bridge that you have to maneuver. And every so often a part of the bridge might collapse, you know, around you. That's pretty cool. There is an airport. And yeah, so, you know, basic areas around. And I would say the game focuses mostly on the action, not so much on the scares and such. The ending I felt was a letdown, but I don't know. It's it's kind of par for the course by now, you know, setting up another game and I don't know. It does deliver some closure, that I will admit. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.